executives from energy and utility company Chesapeake Utilities at the NYSC ringing the closing bell and we've got our CEO Mike McMasters here. Good to see you. A lot of your executives on the floor right now. Yes, they are. Great to be here. Everybody's excited to be here for this event. Well, your investors are probably excited based on your last earnings report. You had record earnings once again in your last uh, filing. That's despite warmer weather. So I guess that's part of a, being a utility is being disciplined and making sure you can deliver. That, that's exactly right. It's the ninth consecutive year of record earnings. We're very proud of that. We're proud of all of the employees that are doing a great work that, that enabled that to occur. And yes, weather, we, we prefer cold weather, but we have to live with it whether it's warm or cold. I'm going to argue with you on that. I prefer, prefer warm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let me ask you about, uh, so you had some interesting developments in 2015. First of all, you had an acquisition, yes. Gather Code. Now, yes. tell me about acquisitions going forward. How important is that in terms of the overall strategy? Well, we're uh, constantly looking at acquisitions, and we try to grow our company from the core perspective to get the earnings growth that we expect, and the acquisitions are really done to help supplement that. So it's not necessary that we do acquisitions to be successful, but it does help accelerate our, our earnings per share growth if we do it in a disciplined manner, and we've been very disciplined on, on those acquisitions, and it has been very accretive for us, so we're excited about anything we can find once it meets our criteria. You actually have a lot of projects going on, and you're building out trans transmission capacity as well. How quickly do some of these project, projects move to the bottom line? When do you see the benefits from them? Well, um, it, it de depends on the project. Right now we've got, I think, three that should come to fruition in 2016. You know, we've got that combined heat and power plant that we're building on Amelia Island, which is a very complex uh, commercial transaction. Um, and our, our team's doing a great job. We think that's, that's on schedule, on budget. Uh, we've got a couple of other projects, a reliability project that we're trying to get in service as soon as we can. We're still waiting for some FERC approvals. And the same thing for another pipeline project. We're still uh, waiting for some FERC approvals. And uh, we're trying to do the best we can to get those approvals as quickly as possible so we can get them in service. Are you able to benefit from the LNG export soon to be trend? I think we can call it. That's fair to say in the U.S. Um, I, I don't know that the uh, LNG export business is something that's going to be, uh, that we're going to be, uh, we're going to be participating in. Um, a lot of that's going to happen out of Texas. We're up on Delmarva and also in Florida and in Ohio. But uh, I, don't, I don't see that having a big impact on us. No. How about nat gas prices? Where do you see prices going? Well, prices are very low right now. And, um, we They've see, been low for a while. Yes, they have yeah. been. Yes, they have. And we see it being stable for quite some time with the, with the magnitude of the natural gas supplies in this country, 100 years worth of supply. So we think it'll be stable for a long period of time. And that benefits us as a distributor and as a company that delivers gas to distributors. So we're very close to the end use customers. So when our customers benefit, we benefit as well. And so we're, 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 we're fine with where they are. We're fine if they go up a little bit, actually. And you've actually, in your business, been able to weather some of the bigger energy concerns facing oil companies, for instance. So I want to make that distinction because yes. I'm not sure every investor does. They hear energy company and might not make that distinction. Correct. Right. Right. Yes, and the key there is that because we're selling to end users or, or companies that are delivering to end users, we're closer to the customer and we're more like what experiencing the customer's experiencing as opposed to experiencing what the producers that end of the uh, value chain is experiencing. What's the biggest challenge that you think you'll have this year just in terms of execution or external factors that might impact the business? Well, we look three and five years out when we're doing business development activity. So for us, we're always concerned about that, third, that fourth year primarily, the fourth and fifth year. So our biggest challenge is going to be bringing the fourth and the fifth year uh, get some clarity on that so next year and the year after that we have continued growth. We want to keep the pipeline full um, so it takes two or three years to develop these projects. So it's going to be that, that third, fourth, fifth year out that we're looking hard at. Mike McMaster, it's great to talk to you. Thanks so much. Well, thank you very much.